Huh. Hey guys, it's Dane at Jonah Guitars, and uh, I got a brand new build series uh, I'm gonna start uploading. Uh, it's about this guy right here, the gecko, and uh, all of the uh, the whole process of building will be uh, covered. It's, it's going to be a very complete uh, series. So I hope you join me and uh, we'll see you there. Okay, uh, I've uh, got everything put together, wiring's done, the uh, control cavity plates are in, um, put the strap buttons on. I'm uh, back to the nut, getting the nut, uh, just final sand. I haven't done any of that yet. I'm going to final sand the nut uh, on the ends and you know the face of the thing. And then I'll, I'll uh, glue it in place and then I'll do my layout on my strings and, uh, and file and start, to start cutting those in. Uh, before I do that though, I've got some uh, some cleanup on the fretboard. I um, I got a little bit of oil that rolled over the edge. I also wanted to take this is uh, I actually also managed somehow to get a couple of little spots of super glue stuck on it. And uh, I had already I've already got the thing oiled and everything. I had some oil. I mean fretboard oiled, not. Uh, Not urethane oil, like uh, gunstock oil, like I, I used on the neck or my own concoction of gunstock oil. Um, so some of that is rolled around, and I'm just trying to clean that up a little bit. So that's what that's what's happening now. So I'm just cleaning up the fretboard. I will take the razor once uh, once all the obvious stuff is is finished and I'll go all the way up both sides and basically just take a little chamfer right on the that corner three or four strokes and uh, what that does is it just softens this edge as you reach around the neck to you know to play you just kind of got a sharp edge here that I take some of that out as I'm as I'm doubling the frets, but um, I also uh, go back and just make sure that it's softened up with the razor blade, like that. Some people uh, do what they call burnishing, where they would just take a like a Phillips screwdriver or something, and basically just compress the uh, the fiber on the on the edge of the fretboard, and um, just to kind of roll it over and I just prefer to just do this and then I'll hit it with some you know thousand grit and uh, once again I'll, I'll just boil the fretboard and that'll take care of any any bare wood obviously down here near the you know over the body you have to be especially careful not to uh, compromise that finish. Not to mention that over the body you can't really wrap your hand around to where you're going to feel a sharp edge. So, just so you know that process. And uh, I'm going to continue to do that. And once I get up this side, I'll have to move it out of the vise to get these last. Um, I'll get some here.
and if I have it, you know, it still feels a little sharp to me. Then I'll just do a little more. And then, like I said, I'll go over it with paper and re oil it. And then we'll get it. All right, I'm going to start here on a kind of a tight shot on the the bridge saddles and uh, can, what I've done is uh, I've got six strings coming through the back of the guitar and then I've got the three high strings there, unisons, uh, coming through the back of the bridge. Now I'll see if I can push that up where you can't really see it but yeah they're they're coming right through the the tail end of the bridge here. This is a top a top feeder or a or a through body bridge. One, the reason I went with this bridge was because I could go from either direction. I knew I needed three extra holes for this for these uh, unison strings. So um, what I've done is uh, just just slightly notched the bridge saddles where I want these these pairs to be, and then uh, you know getting everything evened out and uh, and notching each one of those just slightly so that uh, I'm not worried about these things realigning themselves down here uh, without notches these strings being because one is coming up uh, through the body and one is to the back <clears throat> they're obviously vying for the same space um, you know with tension on them right now they're 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 pretty relaxed um, these two high E's here and the, and the low E are in and, and pretty much at pitch and then uh, we'll go down to the uh, we'll go down to the, the nut here working on uh, on the nut as well so it's a little trickier than just doing a straight up six string or just a straight up 12 string because you could just go okay uh, the, you know the center of the pair of strings is, is here and then space accordingly but when you've got three single strings and then you got three pairs uh, trying to get you know bridge the gap between the two and make it feel like you're not got something weird going on anyway so I've been messing with that a bit um, so I think I've got everything lined out where I want it and I do have the low E and the high E's down to where I want them and so at this point I'm just going to file these in um, you've uh, Gosh, you've seen plenty of that lately, I think, on my channel of filing. Uh, well, maybe not lately, but uh, I do have set up um, videos and that sort of thing where I do nut filing. Um, so I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna video that on this particular thing here. Um, yeah. So I just wanted to kind of bring you up to speed as where I'm at right now, uh, and that's what I'm doing. I strung it up and. Uh, uh, and filing the the nut in the nut is you know finish sanded all the way around even on the front uh, but once the strings are down where I want them uh, I will I will pull them out and, and file the nut down a little bit right now this for instance where this ended up it's pretty much flush maybe just a little bit under the top of the nut and I need to file some of that off of there I like to leave almost half the string exposed uh, on on the wound strings, and then just cover the just cover the the non wounds. Okay, so I've got um, I got all the uh, strings down in the nut where I want them. I think I'm somewhere. I could I guess I'd measure it. Let's see where that here it goes. Um, what is that one? Ten. Um, I know I'm somewhere around 16 thou. Uh, there again, I've explained before, if you fret the third fret, kind of just look at the gap over the first fret. And this is still a little high uh, for, for where I typically will end up at, but what I'm going to do is get the nut shape down to where it's, you know, right where it needs to be. Then I might settle these in just a little farther. Um, yeah, maybe 17. Anyway, it's it's right around that kind of common, yeah, 
It's right at 17. Um, so yeah, those would definitely be going down a little bit. There again, I'm not so hung up on numbers, but just as a point of reference for folks who are uh, maybe wanting to get you know close, stay at a safe margin. Uh, I've had uh, guitars come into the shop that when you fret them at the third fret, they're actually laying on the first fret, right? With no adverse kind of problems, and you know, no string rattle or anything like that. Now this thing is uh, just under 464 ths at the 12th fret uh, right now. Next got, I think it's got 10 thousandths of relief in it, and uh, I got no issues with anything like that. And I've had guitars in here that you really have to work to get 464 ths and um, and no rattling. So. Uh, and it's a 46 gauge string. This is a, a set of tens here. Now I really snapped it and I got a little bit, but uh, that won't happen in the playing position. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and loosen the strings up, file the nut down. I have a, uh, well, I had, uh, here it is, I just laid it down. I'm going to be putting a string retainer on this because this is a straight, a straight peg head, not a tip tilt back. And that guy will go right about where the line in the tape is at down there is just going to go right in there and uh, so we'll get good bring it right down to where we're, we're going straight into the pigs with that um, so rather than do uh, you know I might be able to get away with individual string trees you know out here somewhere you can't see that out here somewhere but then that still leaves these other ones kinda high and this will just bring everything uniformly over the net, so that's why I'm going with the tree, or the uh, the bar, rather. All right, thought I'd bring you back in here. So I'm just uh, I got the the nut file down the the string slots the depth that I wanted. I've gone uh, I'm obviously sanding uh, the nut here, so I've I've gone um, 220, 320. 400. Uh, this should be, that's actually a thousand. Um, oh, well, good. I turned the camera on just in time to go chase sandpaper. So, going from 400, uh, wet and dry, to 400 in the, in the green, the papers, the sanding papers that you get at Mac. Um, And I, I like these because the uh, wet and dry tends to uh, uh, stain or get into the pores of a bone nut. So um, I, I should have actually just skipped to the 400 altogether and gone to this. But I think this 400, I don't know what their grading system is, is quite a bit finer than the 400 uh, wet and dry. So. And then it goes, grays the next one, and it's either six or eight hundred. I, I had to write it down inside the uh, the folder where I keep these so that I remember. But grays next, and then the uh, blue is uh, finer than that, and that's probably about a thousand, maybe fifteen. So by the time I get to there, uh, I'm done. And uh, I file, you know, I roll this front edge of the nut up uh, so you don't have a sharp edge there all the way around everything there's there's nothing sharp on this nut um, and I play I play my E maybe I'm different than a lot of people but I like to set the guitar up for that occurrence I play the E with my three I don't use my index finger like if you're doing a bar chord and you play the E I use those fingers right and then when I play an E up at the nut, I just slide it down without my, my index finger. Um, do the same thing with the A minor shape. I'll play it with these three fingers just to uh, facilitate sliding out or doing whatever, sliding down, not having to grab another form. Um, I don't, I'm not really sure why I started doing that. It just seemed like it made sense. And now it's a habit. Anyway, that's that's another story. Um, all the all the ways I can't play guitar well. 
So there we go. I'm uh, I'm done with that, and I actually have to shoot out of here and get to work. So um, I'm I'm pushing the clock here a little bit. I don't know if you can see how fabulous that looks. I will um, tune it up to pitch and then pull the strings out and put a little bit of goo in the strings. I still have to put the uh, before I get too far along here. I have to put the the bar across here. Anyway, I'll do that later on.